these regions were particularly of interest for the, uh, for the project from the very beginning. As you know, a, the project got a large grant from, by the International Science Council, and the International Science Council is very keen to support science in developing countries. And so it has three regional offices. One is in Africa, another one is in Asia and Pacific, and the other one is in Latin America and the Caribbean. And so at the beginning of the project, we had regional, I mean, the, for the three tasks of the survey, we had regional workshops in 2017 in these regions. One was in Asia, in Taiwan. Then the other one was in Colombia, in Latin America. <clears throat> and the other one was in Africa. And the idea was to bring in some regional flavor into the three tasks of the project. So now, before I move on, let me give you a little bit of a disclaimer of what I'm going to show. All these regions are very different, and there are many differences within each region. And <clears throat> particularly in Asia, you have very large countries with large scientific communities and other countries with rather small communities. So uh, the results of the survey are an average of all, all those situations then uh, not all of them were equally represented because of the size of their scientific communities, the countries. And then I am going to give you what I have and a little bias in Latin America because I have more results on that. But anyway, so um, uh, most of the results will come from the global survey and some from the other two tasks, particularly task three. So this is the regions in which the uh, global survey analysis was performed. So concerning the three regions I, have, I had to look at for this talk, Asia Pacific actually is uh, Western Asia. So the, the global survey was, uh, did an analysis in sub-regions of those three regions. So one is Western Asia, another is Central Southern Asia, another is Eastern Southeast Asia. The Latin American, the Caribbean was analyzed in two groups. One is Central American Caribbean that includes Mexico and South America. And then Africa is Africa is one. So um, this is the number of responses that the global survey received uh, from these regions. So from Africa, it was almost 4% of the total, Asia Pacific 20, and Latin America and Caribbean 12. And we had some expectation of how many responses we could receive from each of these regions. And uh, for Asia Pacific, we only received 33% of what we were expecting, but the other two regions we received many more responses than what we expected. So these are the countries that, not all of them, yeah, these are up to, when they make up to 90% of the responses to see how spread the uh, responses are when I talk about African results. They are mostly dominated, let me see what is the, the thing, I guess this is this. So if you look, oh, let me go back. Uh, if you look at the, um, Countries in Africa, so South Africa and Nigeria, they make up, up almost 50, uh, slightly over 50% of the total responses of Africa. And then the rest is more or less spread among a bunch of different countries. In other regions, it's more dominated by a very few countries. Like, for example, in Asia, Japan had 2,500 uh, responses, China, 1,200. And so that counts for 76% of the responses from Asia. And if you add Korea, Republic of Korea and Taiwan, it's 92. Then other areas of Asia also, Central Southern Asia is dominated by responses that came from India. It's 80% of the total response. And then Western Asia is uh, Israel, Turkey, is 86% of the responses. So, 
Yeah, I'm giving, I'm giving the proportion of women over the total. So it's here. Let me, let me go back. I forgot to mention. So in Africa, it was 61% over the whole number of responses. And in these regions, it was 36% female, 45 and 59. So this is mostly men responses. And then in the other Latin American, uh, Central and Caribbean, it was mostly dominated by Mexico with 77% of the responses, and then these other countries. And then in South America, it was Argentina and Brazil accounted for by like 70%, and then well, these are the, uh, the other countries that I came up to almost 100%, it's not 100%. Anyway, so to give you a flavor that we are giving you averages of these regions, but they are slightly dominated by certain countries. So let me show you some results uh, from the uh, survey. Some of them have been shown yesterday, so maybe I repeat myself. So th these are shown, I don't know if you, if you get to see, these are all these subregions of the survey, and so the first Two bars correspond to Africa, then it's North America, that not, doesn't enter my talk, then it's Caribbean, Central America, then it's South America, Western Asia, Central, Southern Asia, East, Southeast Asia, and then it's Europe, and we don't go to there. And then the way this is shown is if there is a significant difference between, uh, so there are two bars because one of them is male and the other one is female. So the first one is female and the second is male per region. And then if there are, there are significant differences between male and female's responses, then they are colored, so like green and orange. And if there are no significant differences given the number of responses, they are both gray. So. This is about, uh, the question here is uh, saying that they had a positive relationship with their advisor during the, their doctoral studies. And so most of both female and male had positive responses. And, and the lowest was for uh, women in Eastern Southeast Asia. That's lowest for the regions I'm looking at in this talk, basically. And then there were no significant differences in the positive responses that came from Africa and Latin America and the Caribbean. Then this is about my program treated everyone fairly. And here there are significant differences between women and men in South America. And in this region, women were li less likely to indicate that the programs treated everyone fairly. So, this I found interesting because I have more details about Latin America in particular. So uh, this is about interruptions. And one thing I've noticed during the, your doctoral studies is that, for example, in Africa and in Western Asia, there were no significant differences between men and women. And I was wondering, but there were large percentage of people who said they had significant interruptions. So there were interruptions, but they were equally likely to occur for men and women. So I was wondering if that's related to conflict in these regions that affected equally men and women. While in other regions where you don't have conflict, you have other, I mean, the interruptions due to childbirth or other personal things uh, affect mostly women. So you have the uh, significant differences are um, mostly in, well, it's like no one. There, there are not very many significant differences, not in the regions I have to look at here. So I have a question. Yes. Uh, for example, West Asia. Yes. Female was 39%, male 22%, and yet it's not colored. Yes, well, that depends on the number of responses and, and Rachel should be able to tell how you came up with the, uh, whether there is a significant difference or not because it has to do with p-values and it's the sample size, I guess, that affects. So I guess it's very few responses there. So maybe you have large differences in percentage but it's very few people actually because it's very few responses. 
So I guess it's based on p-value. I don't know what the uh, criterion was. The statistic is called chi-square. Like yes, yes. So it's a chi-square statistics that they use to decide. You can find the formula online, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. But, 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 but it's but, both... It's but, but, but the, the source of the problem is that there's just two yeah. people. Yeah, well, in Western Asia, we had very few responses in... Africa as well, other regions, they were larger samples. Then, about career prog progression, well, this is a, um, a saying that their career progression was, uh, how it was compared to colleagues, if it was a, um, compare, if it was, well, these are more quickly, the responses are more quickly, about the same and more slowly. And so at least one third of the women reported slower ca career progression compared to colleagues who completed their degrees at the same time in Latin America and the Caribbean, Central and Southern Asia, and Eastern and Southeast Asia. And then in all regions, here is uh, indicating their work or career did not change significantly. And this is funny because there are significant differences between men and uh, women in all regions here. So men were significantly more likely to say that their work or career did not change significantly because they had a child. Okay, so these are some results specific to Latin America. We had a closing activity like this one in Sao Paulo, and Laura Merner from the AIP Statistical Research Center presented some results. Uh, on Latin America, so I'm going to show you some of them. And this, uh, this is about the uh, interruptions during their doctoral studies. And um, so you see, uh, no, it's the majority, it, both in men and, and women, but 20% of women said they had significant interruptions and only 13 men. And these are the reasons, and so if you look at the uh, main reason for male responses saying they had significant interruptions is because of financial constraints, while for women is pregnancy or childbearing. And then a kids don't show here. And here, I don't know, well, there are illness and other things, but there is this large difference there. And then whether this break slowed down significant or this change uh, slowed down significantly affect your career. And so this is a from a great deal to the left to not at all to the right. So the first two lines are men and the other two are uh, women, and so they are, it affected my uh, professional credibility, it's the second of the two lines. It affected the type of work, oh no, this is, it affected my professional credibility, it's the first two lines, so it's first men, second women, and then it affected the type of work that I do, it's first men, and uh, yeah, it's first women and then men, so it, women are more affected. Yeah, that's true, that's true. I, I don't have the M and F. But, uh, so you see that uh, women are more affected than men, both in the type of work they do and also the credibility of their work. And then, how did your work change because you are a parent? And so men say, my work or career did not change significantly in 51% of the responses. And I chose less demanding or more flexible work schedule in, is the, uh, the answer that is 45% of the women chose. And then whether your career, you made decisions differently depending on your, um, about you made this, personal decisions differently based on your career. So um, the, the green thing is yes, the gray thing is no. Male is the first line, female is the second line, and so you see that women uh, answer yes 
more often <laughs> than men. Okay, so now we go to the, to the three regions. And this is a, um, about career progression and also pre prestige. And this is another thing that I found interesting because it's whether you served on important committees. And there are no differences in Africa and also in Central Southern Asia. And so it's more or less the same percent of women and men who said that served in prestigious committees. And then uh, the significant differences show up in South America and in Eastern and Southeast Asia of the regions that we are, yes. Is China classified under East? It's East, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this is about employer and co-workers, and I think I'm going to skip this so that I can move to, to the other tasks. And then uh, about salary, uh, over 27% of the women reported lower pay than colleagues with similar qualifications in Africa, Asia, and Central American Caribbean, and 22% in South America. And then this is about comparing their salary to their partner or spouse. And so in all regions, we, women were more likely than men to say that their partner or spouse earned more money than they did. And 36% 36 of the men in, uh, in Central South, South Asia said that were mar had a partner that was unemployed, and only 3% of women. So it's very different, the personal situation of men and women who answer the survey. And so this is whether your spouse or partner is on, in the same field that you are. And so it's very large, the percentages in Latin America is between 43 and 44%. This is because we have separate Central and South America. And it's 45% in Central Southern Asia that have spouses that are employed in their field for uh, women. And that's not so common for men. And so there are significant differences between men and women across all regions here. Okay. And then uh, this is about discrimination. And you also see uh, whether you, feel you felt discriminated against in the assessment or evaluation of achievements because of your gender. And so the green is female and the orange is men. And you see huge differences here. And here is uh, people who never experienced discrimination. And so again, orange is men and green is women. So there are significantly differences uh, across all regions here. And these are the sources of discrimination that people in Latin America chose. So th the first one is gender. So you see almost 50% of women said that they felt discriminated because of gender. And the other reasons are not, so there are significant differences, but they are not that large, although age accounts for 23% of the responses in the case of women. And then if we go to, again to the three regions, um, this is about harassment. So whether you personally encountered sexual harassment at school or work, and these are significant differences everywhere but in West Asia, that one is 19% women and 7% men said they encountered that. And so here I have some details about that in Latin America. And this is, a, have you ever experienced or encountered sexual harassment? And there were different options. One was no. Then yes, I heard about it happening to someone else. Yes, it happened to me. Yes, I witnessed happening to someone else. And so the first response is no, both for women and and men, although for me, women is 45%, for men is 63%. And the second is I heard it happened to someone else, but it's 34 women, 31 men, and then it happened to me is 24 women, and 6% to men. Okay. So, and this, this is an, an interesting thing also. 
uh, who most encouraged you in your studies? And so if you look at what's the, the um, most often chosen response in the case of men, men is your own determination, willpower, and hard work. And in the case of women, it's parents. So it's the perception of whether it was your own effort or it was you had help from someone else. So I had some accounts the, about the role of mothers in a, for women in Latin America, but I'm, I'm going to skip that because I have only five minutes. And so then about the study of publication patterns, um, this is the list of academic disciplines and geographical regions where differences in self-reported submission numbers to top journals from men and women are found to be statistically significant. And so you can see that in these regions that I am supposed to talk about, in uh, South America we have in mathematics, and then computer science, biology, and then in uh, Asia is mostly in chemistry. And then this is the uh, map that Helena didn't show yesterday, but I found funny because Argentina is there like an outlier where women you have single authored mathematical papers by women. So I found that amazing. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about task three. And uh, this is the number of good practice initiatives that were found in the regions. Um, and these are the li this is the list. And so I chose bit. This is one in Africa, which is uh, to mostly computer science, and addresses uh, different stages. That's an interesting thing. So, for example, it has a one-month intensive boot camp for um, youth to learn how to produce apps for their communities. Then also a summer camp for school girls, primary and secondary schools. Then also a, a, a reach program. Uh, a, training program for people to do outreach, which is an interesting thing, and also scholarships for university students. Then this is one from Asia. This is a tool for coding also. This is in India. And this is the one that I know the best, which is the Red Mexitec, which means the Mexican network for science and technology and gender which is a, an interdisciplinary network of social scientists and scientists in STEM. Lilia Mesa, who is here, she was in charge of, she was the director of the network until very recently. And so they have a bunch of activities. They have meetings, they have publications, journals, a, books, and you can go to the web page and look for it. And in particular, uh, the, this network was very active in a type of activity we've been organizing in Latin America for quite a while, which is workshop for young scientists. We had one in Puebla, in Buenos Aires, in Bogota, in Lima, in Sao Paulo a few weeks ago. And at some point, we combined them with activities related to the gender gap in STEM project, in particular in Bogota and in Sao Paulo. And so we have a website where we also collected our database of, but it's not a database, it's just bullets with list of good practice initiatives in different regions. We also produced a book with funds from the project. The book was published by the Mexican Physical Society and it has contributions of all the people that went to the Bogota workshop with initiatives in our countries, in our societies, uh, scientific societies across the region, etc. And we have social networks, Facebook and Twitter. And then if you want more details, you can go see the poster. And one problem that is quite pervasive in Latin America is gender violence. Uh, there are many women that are killed. In Argentina, it's one every 30 hours. These are numbers from Mexico. They've been growing very, very fast. So this is Chile. The Chile is not, this is not gender, it's not a killings, it's a strike of women that lasted for 100 days, starting with a sexual harassment case that was not handled property, uh, properly at the uh, university. 
And so all of this led to a movement that is called Not One Le, Le I mean, Ni Una Menos is in Spanish. Not one, not any other less would be something like that. So that most of our universities in the region, at least in Argentina, they have protocols to handle sexual and discrimination and violence, basically. And then one thing we learned from our, uh, in our workshops with young people, because it's not that we just empower young people, they empower us, we learned quite a bit, is all these social network activities. This is a woman, a young student in Chile who has over 4,000 followers on Twitter and does all this outreach. Then people who have YouTube channels to show uh, scientists that don't uh, fit the usual stereotype. Then these are the astrotubers. Then you have Instagram. The, in Brazil, they also are, this are tube, YouTube channels, Instagram, and in, in, there are many, many things, 500 queer scientists. And then in Instagram, in Brazil, they decided to have a day in a sci the day of a scientist or something like that, so that you, you should portray your life as a scientist on inter Instagram. Anyway, so let us turn the world upside down. Thank you. Thank you, Silvina.